we have a question from Craig Sanders. How does changing the linkage affect the suspension? And how can you calculate the changes? So in this case, we're talking about linkage ratios on rear shocks. So thank you for the question, Craig. One of the ways in which we look at this, <clears throat> especially in determining whether a linkage is linear or progressive, is to quite simply remove the shock, remove the shock spring, go ahead, reinstall the shock correctly. Then take the rear wheel through an inch of travel and measure how much the shock has gone through travel. Do that at one inches, two inches, three inches, four inches. And if it's a linear linkage, then the amount of travel in the shock per inch should be roughly the same. If as you go through the travel, the amount of travel changes in the shock itself as you raise the wheel, wheel per inch, then it's probably gonna be progressive. So there's a very, very simple way of doing that. A lot of manufacturers also tell you what you have in terms of do you have a progressive linkage when it comes OEM, and then aftermarket offers linear linkages for much more of a racing application. Now in general terms, if you are looking at a stock bike and you put into it an appropriate level of sag, you may be surprised to find that for the most part it's linear, but when it gets towards the end of its travel, it gets to be much more progressive. Now that is of course a general statement. You'd have to work on your own bike to figure out whether that is true or not. So obviously if you're gonna remove the spring from the shock itself, you're gonna need a shock spring compressor and vernier calipers to do very finite measuring so that all the data you aggregate is accurate and that will tell you what you have so hopefully that answered your question Craig thank you very much for that if you have any other questions please send them to me via Facebook and Dave Moss tuning thanks